Now that we have a few indefinite integrals under our belt, let's interpret our antiderivatives in terms of the graph of f. Now, our setup, we're going to have a function little f, we're going to treat it as a derivative, and we want to find the function that it came from. If we can find a capital F that does that, so it's going to mean capital F prime is going to be equal to f, we'll call capital F an antiderivative of little f. Then we get all other antiderivatives by adding a constant. Now, for notation, okay, as an example, we're going to take the indefinite integral of 2x plus 2 with respect to x. So this is saying, if I give you the function 2x plus 2, find me a function such that if I take its derivative, I get 2x plus 2. Okay, our rule is going to be, if we have a power of x, okay, and that power is not minus 1, we just add 1 to the exponent, flip it over. If we have a constant, then we just multiply by x. So here, I have x to the 1, so I add 1 gives me a 2, we flip it over, the 2's go away, and then I have x squared. Then for the 2 here, we're just going to get 2x, and then we add a constant of integration. The way we check our work, well, we note this is just a language trick. It really says x squared plus 2x plus c. If we take its derivative, we're going to get back 2x plus 2, and that should match our integrand. Now, if we want to consider graphs, what do we have for little f? We're treating that as a derivative. So the geometry of the derivative is, that's going to be the tangent line to the graph of our function at a given point. So what we're starting off with is the derivative. We want to go to the graph of the original function. Let's take a look at our specific solution. So we have small f equals 2x plus 2. We're going to treat that as the derivative of a capital F. So my antiderivatives, we're going to put down here in this plane. Now what kind of things do you get from your derivative? You set it equal to 0, you're going to get horizontal tangent lines. Okay, and they can be used to split regions of increasing and decreasing. If it's positive or negative, we'll get our regions of increasing and decreasing. So for our antiderivatives, let's put in our box. We're going to have, okay, this function is equal to 0 at minus 1. So that's going to split our box for increasing and decreasing. Our function here is going to be positive when x is greater than minus 1. So we'll have increasing on this region. We're going to be negative when we're less than minus 1, so we're going to be decreasing on this region. Now, our check is, okay, our general antiderivative has formula x squared plus 2x plus c. So these all have to be parabolas. Okay, you note, you take the derivative of x squared plus 2x plus c, set it equal to 0. That's going to give you x equals minus 1, and that's going to be where the vertex is. So for all these parabolas, they're all going to have their vertex at x equals minus 1. Okay, and that bears out. Then, note, if I graph any one of these, we get all the others just by adding constants. So that's what the constant of integration is doing. Now, what's happening here? Okay, first, note, if you fix an x, okay, all of these parabolas have the same derivative. So when you fix an x, what's happening is they're all going to have the same slope to their tangent line above that point. So we'll all be equal. So for instance, at minus 1, horizontal tangent line, so slope is equal to 0, equal to 0, equal to 0, equal to 0. And that's going to be the same no matter what point you pick. Secondly, okay, there's an analog here with lines. So if I want the graph or an equation of a line, what do you need? You need one point and the slope. Okay, and the slope is going to be the derivative. So the analog here is going to be, if I want the graph of one of these functions, it's not enough just to get the derivative. I also need at least one other point. Now, how's that work? So the idea is going to be, once you choose a point, you're going to pin down your constant of integration. So for instance, suppose we want the solution that has f of 0 equal to 2. So we want the given derivative, 2x plus 2, and I want the point f of 0 equals 2. Well, what we would do is put the 0 into our general solution. So it's x squared plus 2x plus c. Put 0 in there, I get a c out. But we want to force that to be equal to 2. So that gives me the c equals 2, 
So the solution that's gonna satisfy our derivative and having this point is gonna be f of x equals x squared plus two x plus two.